You know, originally this video was going to be a lot different. I wrote out this huge script, it was going to cover the history of Bungie and 343's companies, the challenges they faced, and a bit of sugarcoating and trying to make a bit of a story to it. But I decided to go a different route, because I'm not going to pull any punches. I'm going to go on an angry gamer rant. 343's first mistake was its birth, and I mean that quite literally. If you look at Bungie, right, it started as two friends making video games in their garage and it grew naturally to a modest studio. 343 was like a genetic experiment. You see, after Bungie split from Microsoft and went on to make Destiny, Microsoft knew they needed a new company to handle Halo. So they created 343 Industries by splicing together a bunch of former employees of different studios that had never really worked together, and even hiring new employees who for confidentiality reasons could not be told they were going to work on Halo 4. They specifically hired people who hated Halo so that they could shape and push the game to appeal to new fans. They saw it as a way to fix the problems, find the reasons people don't like Halo, and address them. It sounds reasonable on paper, but what ended up happening was alienating the people that did like Halo by forcing these changes and failing to really capture new fans. Right from the get-go of making Halo 4, 343 faced issues. With so many developers from different backgrounds, moving towards a common goal was difficult. The creative director of Halo 4, Josh Holmes, recalled that he had sort of like an epiphany moment that proved the team was headed in the right direction when early in development, the team completed a section of the game that was very traditionally Halo. Despite positive feedback from the testers, however, 343 Industries discarded the prototype as too traditional. But let's not dwell too long on Halo 4, because it's old as dirt now. Been there, done that. So let's just do a little lightning round of some of the things I didn't like about Halo 4. They completely botched the introduction of the Forerunners. I think they should have kept them a mystery, but if they are going to bring them into the light, have show them alive and have them front and center in your games, they should be like the final villain of the franchise, not some limp dick villain that you shove aside in the first game he's introduced, only to bring him back to life in a fucking comic and then kill him again. They ruined infection mode by making it so the infected can't use any guns whatsoever. They tried and failed to mimic Call of Duty from everything from custom classes to killstreaks and perks. And there was the complete art style shift. Actually. Pause the lightning round, I gotta talk about this one for a minute. It's one thing to change the art style, Bungie did it in Reach. It's another thing to try to fucking force your game design choices into the canon. If 343 just said, Hey guys, we want to make an impression of ourselves as a new company, and as such, we're making changes to the art style. I mean, they didn't have to say anything, I don't really care, but they could have just said that. But don't tell me Chief's armor was upgraded by nanorobots, even though every single weapon and vehicle on the ship has a new visual look that matches with the equipment on the Infinity. And don't tell me the Elites are a new subspecies, even though when you reintroduce old characters like the Arbiter, you change his design to this new subspecies. Like if you're gonna give these lore explanations for like artistic choices, then at least make them hold up to scrutiny. You didn't have to give them in the first place. This BS kind of thinking is also what gives us the stupid war games matchmaking lore shit, trying to make multiplayer canon. You know how they made multiplayer canon in Halo 3? They didn't. It was just a fucking video game and it had multiplayer PvP. It didn't need a wiki page about how when you play CTF, you're actually a Spartan aboard the Infinity playing VR training. Again, it's not like this lore fact is ever relevant to the story, characters don't talk about it. And yet people bring it up as a fucking defense for the removal of modes like Invasion and the removal of playable elites. Saying, well, there's no elites in multiplayer because it's Spartans training, so they can't have Invasion. Which, like, if you really want to have some dumbass lore for your matchmaking, sure, right? It's just a little bit of set dressing. But it should never come at the cost of actual features. Continuing with the lightning round, the Prometheans are boring. They were kind of fell flat as an enemy type. They're just not as interesting to fight as the Covenant or the Flood. They lack a sort of uniqueness to them. And the lack of a proper Forge world-like canvas. Yes, I'm aware that later into the game they added Forge Island, but Forge Island is just stupid. It might as well just be a super flat world. All in all, suffice to say, Halo 4 was not a great first impression for 343.
Right, so that was Halo 4. 343's next great endeavor was the Master Chief Collection. A single platform where players could seamlessly play every Halo game except for ODST and Reach because you're not playing as Master Chief in those games and this is the Master Chief Collection. Except those games would eventually be added later anyway, so a bit of an oopsie there. <laughs> Now, Master Chief Collection was very ambitious, including the criminally underrated Halo 2 Anniversary, complete with amazing blur cutscenes, new vehicles and weapons, and interactive map elements added to the sandbox, a robust forge mode, and more customization. It's too bad they only added in these three shit-ass armor sets and refused to add anything else to the game, instead just seeing how much shit they can cram into Halo 3. Uh, why does Halo 3 get like 99% of the cosmetics? Probably because it's like the top selling Halo game of all time, like one of the most popular ones ever. Oh, so does that mean like Halo CE and Halo 2, it's gonna get a remaster with better graphics and new content, finally remastering the entire original trilogy and symbolically finishing the fight? No, not at all. That would make too much sense. And I don't want to see a single comment saying Halo 3's graphics hold up. They look alright, you know? The graphics are fine. They could look better! But who the fuck wouldn't want Halo 3 blur cutscenes, new weapons and vehicles in a revamped forge mode bringing Halo 3 to the modern era? I'm baffled that people argue against a Halo 3 anniversary just on the graphical claim alone. But right, Master Chief Collection. Getting all the games to run on one application was incredibly difficult, so MCC was plagued with technical problems for years and still has issues to this day. The Master Chief Collection. <laughs> I love you too. In response to the negative coverage of the Master Chief Collection's broken launch, Frankie O'Connor announced that Halo 5 Guardians would not be broken at launch. Halo 5's marketing was aggressive and got people hyped up all over again. Sure, Halo 4 was a misstep, but it wasn't all bad, and the advertisements for Halo 5 promised the story of the Chief going rogue an ex-Oni agent hunting him down. The Hunt the Truth podcast and mirrored trailers pushed forward the idea that more would be revealed about Chief's past and that Halo 5 would be a story of revelations and finding the truth. Halo 5 launched in the campaign was nothing like that at all. 343 completely 180'd and backpedaled away from their Halo 4 narrative, bringing Cortana back to life but making her a villain, only letting you play as Master Chief for two out of the 13 missions adding in repetitive boss fights and an overbloated cast of characters to facilitate a half-baked squad-based gameplay that was not as intuitive or in-depth as advertised. And speaking of advertising, the entire marketing campaign for Halo 5 was so off the ball from what ended up being shipped that is it largely considered to have flat-out been false advertising. Halo 5 is widely regarded to be the worst Halo game. At launch, it was missing many core features that had come to be expected of a Halo title. Features like Forge Mode, Infection, Griffball, Gravity Hammers weren't even there, Split Screen Co-op. The playlist lineup was sparse. The customization was at an all-time low. You could only customize your visor, your helmet, and your armor set. Combine this with the introduction of microtransaction loot boxes, and fans were not happy. The game also moved even further away from the sandbox-focused nature of Halo, and instead opted for a suite of player abilities like Thruster Pack, Spartan Charge, Ground Pound, and Aim Down Sights. However, despite Halo 5's disappointing launch, the game added monthly free content drops of cosmetics as well as many new maps, weapons, and features. Forge Mode would come out two months after launch and be the best we've ever seen, Infection would come out seven months post-launch, and just over a year after launch, 343 added the custom browser. Now with the franchise's most powerful forge and a custom browser to boot, Halo 5 is one of the best Halos for custom games. Although to this day, the game remains plagued with crashing issues and other bugs that will likely never be addressed. Speaking of things that will never be addressed, remember the release of MCC on PC that was once again wrought with technical problems, missed deadlines, and false promises? Now if you think I've been a little harsh, right, thinking maybe Old Roadman is just on his period and needs to cut 343 a little slack. Let's talk about the fucking Halo MCC custom browser for a second. Some of you know where I'm going to go with this, and some of you might not know the full story of this. 
The MCC custom browser was first mentioned by 343 in January of 2018. I'm going to do a little timeline for you guys here. Two months later, in March 2018, it was confirmed and stated by 343 to be one of the most requested community features. In April of 2018, they said the highly anticipated custom browser is high atop the list of the next round of work and should be surfacing in public flights in the next coming months. And yet, we wouldn't really hear much about it for another 10 months until February of 2019, where the community was told for the second time that the browser would be arriving in the coming months. Then nothing. For five months, silence. Then 343 said development of the browser had stalled and taken a back seat. An entire year later, on July 31st, 2020, they said the browser was planned to come out later that same year. In September, they revealed that the browser would be rolling out in stages, added slowly, game by game, and not all at once, as previously thought. The next month, the community was told for the third time that the browser would be added in the coming months. By March 2021, the browser was still nowhere to be seen and was cancelled from its first public flight test. June 2021 was when the browser was finally added, and only for Halo Reach. In October 2021, they added Halo 3 and Combat Evolved. And to this day, there is no browser for Halo 4 or Halo 2, and it's likely that there never will be. That's just one instance of 343's blundering. Once again, Halo 5 was a disappointment and fans were really beginning to lose hope and faith in 343. Thank you, that's right! That's where I want to hear the applause. Okay, now let's get into the nitty gritty everybody. Let's talk about Halo Infinite. So let me set the scene a little bit here. 343 has fumbled their handling of the Halo franchise. They have made some great innovations, but they consistently fail to deliver on important features and deadlines that they set for themselves. For many, this next entry is the last straw for the franchise. It would either be 343's breakthrough into redemption or the last nail in their coffin. We didn't really know what to expect. And then we saw this. This helmet said it all. Halo looked like Halo again. The Chief was back. We're going home. Yes! 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 We're going home! They put out a gorgeous reveal cinematic showing off their new Slipspace engine. And despite it being a tech demo, Everyone took it at face value as a representation of what Halo Infinite would look like. Hypothesizing and expecting there to be giant rhinos and deer, real wildlife, monsters stalking you on the Halo ring. None of which was in the game now. So here's a mistake that 343 make time and time again. The community makes wild assumptions and ideas spread like wildfire partially due to the horrible content drought that some people seem to have forgotten, where for years we were drip-fed the tiniest crumbs of info about Infinite, because they didn't have any info because the game was constantly shifting behind the scenes. But fans were desperate, they would take every crumb and extrapolate on it, and come up with these, these crazy misconceptions about what the game would be like. And 343 sees this. They have multiple staff whose full-time jobs is to interact with Halo fans on Twitter, Reddit, Discord, etc. And yet 343 never does anything to temper the expectations or get ahead of the curve and make it clear that the community have misconstrued or read too deep into things. No, conversely, 343 actually stokes the community up more and more on what turn out to be false expectations. Let me give you an example. If you were to ask a, a company, right, a business, like 343 something, like, are the Flood going to be in Halo Infinite? And the company response is, I can neither confirm nor deny the existence of the Flood. You're going to assume the Flood are there. You wouldn't assume that they're not going to be there if a company says that. Because if they weren't there, they would probably just say they're not going to be there. But that's not what 343 does. They're intentionally vague to mislead people. 
the ideas of wildlife being like what was shown in that initial trailer from 2018 was never once clarified in the five or six years leading up to launch. And only upon people buying the game did they come to realize there were no giant rhinos, there was no deer, no mysterious beasts, just birds and gophers. This is just one example, right? It might sound like I'm nitpicking. So let's talk about the Flood. The Flood were highly, highly anticipated to come back. They set the game on Zeta Halo, which is rich with lore and history tying it to the Flood. Fans were taking pug noises shown by 343 to be confirmation. For literal years, the community was getting hyped for the Flood's return. Convinced 343 was keeping it a surprise. And like I said before, there's no way 343 didn't see this. Over the 5-6 year span that the community constantly talked about the Flood, don't tell me their community manager and community director hadn't seen people talking about it. Did 343 come out, rip off the band-aid and say, we know you're all very excited about the prospect of the Flood, but we want this story to be more focused on Master Chief. While we are not fully closing the door on the Flood for the future, they currently are not present in Halo Infinite's campaign. Or did they plug their ears and let people get excited? Once again, people thought right up until release day that the Flood were in the game, and 343 was going to surprise us all. Well, we were surprised, alright. Because they weren't there. Well, I should say you were. Because you know who was out here predicting the absence of the Flood? Me. While everyone was circle jerking over dog noises, I was using my brain to realize the Flood weren't coming. So 343, for the second time with Halo Infinite, have done a 180 and tried to sweep the entire last game under the rug and pretend it didn't happen. Cortana is back and is the villain? No, 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 she's dead again, and now you're fighting the Banished. But what about the cliffhanger with Arbiter and Halsey and- No, 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 you're fighting the Banished now. A large chunk of the community said, Woohoo! Yeah, baby! The Banished are awesome! This will be epic! And another large chunk of the community said, What the fuck is a Banished? Because they made the main antagonist of Infinite a faction introduced in the sequel to the spin-off RTS game. Now I like Halo Wars, and I like the Banished, but I'm a loser, and a lot of gamers didn't have time to play some fuck-off RTS game, so a lot of them had no idea who this group was, and what makes them different from the Covenant. And you know what? What is the Banished main goal in Halo Infinite? Because I know what the Covenant were doing in the original trilogy. They were going to light the Halo Rings, ascend and become God and kill the universe. I know what the Flood wants. The Flood wants to consume everything in its path. What does the Banished want? Why are they killing the UNSC? They just like war? They just like to kill things? I mean, yeah, it kind of fits their brute character, but like, what is their group's goal? It seems like Atriox would want revenge against Cortana, but the UNSC is fighting Cortana as well. I don't see why he has to kill them. Anyway. Let's take a peek behind the curtain at the dev process. So the tools they used for their fancy new Slipspace engine used basic development tools called Faber. Some parts of Faber dated back to the early 2000s, having also been used for Bungie's Halo games. As a result, the coding became notoriously difficult to use by 343, and it became considered technical debt. 343 had excessively relied on hiring contract workers to the point of making up half the studio according to estimates. Due to Microsoft policies that limit contract workers to keep their jobs for 18 months maximum, the number of workers at 343 was fluctuating constantly, and contract workers would fill their contracts, have to leave, and the next set of contract workers would have to come in and try to pick up half-finished pieces of work and try to keep going with it. The game suffered from creative instability for quite some time. The studio was described to be split into fiefdoms, and this struggle to complete the game and the conflicting decisions resulted in four or five games being developed simultaneously by different sectors of the company. Two-thirds of the planned game was cut by the summer of 2019, with severely removed some of the initial vision. Around this time, Halo Infinite creative director Tim Longo left 343 Industries, but we'd be but would be replaced by the more than capable Mary Olsen, who would step in, take charge, and lead the development process for the next two months, after which she quit as well. The gameplay reveal in July 2020 saw criticism from the gaming community for the game's visual quality. Then one of the stupidest debates I've ever seen started, where 343 defenders came crawling out of their swamps and said the game was never advertised to be next-gen, even though it fucking was. Anyway, everybody was saying, whoa, 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 343, you've been working on this for a long time, it's with a new engine, on a new console generation, why does it kind of look ass? 
but right up until this very trailer debut, 343 was pretending everything was going swimmingly. The trailer ended still saying, coming holiday 2020, a mere three or four months away. And yet, just a couple of weeks later, they had officially delayed the game by a year. Now, they either knew they were going to have to delay the game regardless, and just kept the old trailer date up there because they didn't want to dampen their E3 experience and the hype surrounding that, or they genuinely thought the game was going to be ready in the next couple months, and only due to the fan backlash did that delay actually go through. But regardless, the delay was a good thing. The community saw it as a sign that 343 weren't going to settle for a fractured and subpar launch like Halo 5. 343 had learned and would deliver a polished and full Halo game. In August of 2020, 343 announced that Joseph Staten was coming back to whip the game into shape. Things were looking good. Oh, and then uh, 343 director Chris Lee quit as well, but just don't, don't pay any attention to that. Everything's going good. It's going great. We got Joe Staten back. Multiple higher-ups have jumped ship over the six-year development. Their new engine was finicky, their contracted workers kept running out their terms and moving on. The direction the game was going was being changed constantly, and a global pandemic hit, yet again, right up until release. Everyone thought 343 have learned from Halo 5. The game was free to play, launching on PC with crossplay, a true spiritual reboot that would bring in thousands of new fans. Brand new players would get to experience Halo for the first time, and everything would be perfect. The community had not been told any different. This time the game wouldn't be missing important features. The Halo Infinite launch was a fucking joke. Where to even start, right? There's no split screen. It's been delayed until Season 2. When is Season 2? Season 2 got delayed as well, so it can meet 343's high quality bar. So that's not coming until May. There's also fuck all multiplayer playlists at launch. There literally wasn't even a Slayer playlist. The most basic game mode. If you just want to play Team Deathmatch, you can't. You have to play Quick Play, which might give you one of the only three objective game modes there is. CTF, Oddball, and Strongholds. Once again, there is no fucking Infection. And this one hasn't even been mentioned. Infection does not, from my average Joe point of view, seem like a hard mode to code. You kill a guy, he switches team. Does this shit take years to make? I feel like one programmer at 343 could get an infection mode running in like a day or two's hard work. And if I'm mistaken, let me know. But no infection cucks custom games really really bad. Not that custom games even works, because not only is the game missing tons and tons of features, the stuff that is there is fucking broken. Like when they broke BTB for like a month and a half. You know, all these brand new baby faced could be Halo fans didn't get to see the Halo I knew. The Halo I loved. They got to see some stunted, small, boring game that most of them got bored of after a month or two and left. And I get why. I don't even play Infinite anymore. I finished my Battle Pass. And because there's literally no progression in the game outside the Battle Pass system, I have no incentive to play the game until May. I know I should just be playing the game for the fun of it, but progression has come to be expected, and it's hard to say just play the game for the fun of it when it, what you can play is so limited. You can only play BTB on Fragmentation so many times before you get bored. The events in the game like Tactical Ops or the really big Fracture Tenrai event with the cool samurai armor. What did it add? Was there um, a visual overhaul of the menus? Themed music? Altered appearance of multiplayer maps? A unique new game mode? No. It added fucking Fiesta. A normal game mode that in the past was just another mode to Halo, but now is treated like a special event. The best part is, they ended up adding Fiesta as a playlist anyway, so now when the event rolls around, it literally doesn't add anything to the game. While I'm talking about events, let's talk about the fucking challenges for a second. So 343 have decided in their infinite wisdom that there doesn't need to be any kind of progression beyond the battle pass. Sure. I finished my battle pass, so challenges are meaningless. There's no point to completing them for me. Unless I want to grind all of them out to get the fucking weekly ultimate, which is like a backdrop or some stupid emblem or some shit, right? It's nothing cool. It's not like a, it's not like a weapon attachment or a, a piece of armor. Even armor coating would be nice, right? Something. No, it's like the stupidest shit. But hey, at least when the events roll around, like tactical ops, right? I can do those challenges and progress through that and get some new content. Except I can't. Because the fucking normal challenges get in the way and I'm forced to complete them to make room for my event ones to become available. 
because despite being able to view all the challenges for the week, 3 for 3 artificially bottlenecks you to a couple active at once so that you have to play longer, get frustrated, and want to buy challenge swaps. You know what the weekly ultimate reward should be? It should be like 200 credits for the store. If that was the case, you bet your ass I'd be grinding every week, accumulating those credits. But I mean, that would mean less money for a 343. They need to make some money back after they blew a shit zillion dollars renting actual military jets and shit for the audio in this game. Which is a neat little anecdote if you know it. But if you didn't know it, you would never notice it. You wouldn't hear a wasp and be like, I think that's the real audio from an F-16. You'd assume it was some fucking computer generated noise, because it should have been. What a fucking waste of money. So recently 343 have missed the deadline and failed to deliver a roadmap for when we can expect the arrival of core features that were missing from their launch. Let me repeat that. They missed the deadline for telling us when we can expect to see things like new game modes and maps. They missed the deadline for their own roadmap. They've once again fucked emblems for no discernible reason in this game. The fact you can't make your own emblem is retarded. They pulled this shit for Halo 5 too. Coincidentally, the only other game with microtransactions, so I have to assume it's some way to squeeze money out of us. When Halo 5 launched, you couldn't even pick emblem colors. You just had to use preset palettes to choose from, but 343 realized people hated that, so now in Halo 5 you can pick your colors again, and it works a lot better. And guess what? Infinite is back to the fucking color palette shit for their emblems. I guarantee you, at some point, we will see the emblem color palettes become monetized. Mark my fucking words. Speaking of monetizing shit, how about these armor cores, huh? They've even artificially restricted players from mixing armor pieces from different cores, even though the bots can do it. And apparently they say the bots doing this is a fucking bug. We have to stare at NPCs, bots, having more freedom to choose their appearance than the players, and 343 says it's a glitch that they will fix, don't worry. Well, this video is getting pretty long. You got, I got some more complaints though, how about we do a second lightning round? Uh, Halo Infinite problems. Theater is bugged and doesn't work. Vehicles are made out of paper mache. The Banshee is literally useless. The vehicle sandbox, for the first time in any main Halo game, doesn't feature a single new vehicle. The campaign only having one biome is really boring. A quarter of the entire open world is actually inaccessible outside of one linear part of the story. Try it. Grab a Banshee and fly over here. It doesn't let you. You die. Playable elites have been removed, and not for time constraints, but for a creative decision to make multiplayer a Spartan story, whatever the fuck that means. Player collision has been removed, ruining buddy jumps and again harming custom games. At least make it a toggable option in customs. Store prices were too high at launch. I- sorry, pause again, pause the lightning round. 343 lowered the store prices, right? And it didn't take them very long, a month or two. But, um, I don't know if people have noticed this. But anybody who bought something at those original higher prices, like if you if you bought the Zvezda armor set on like the first week or whatever, you're just cucked out of your money. Uh, because now the armor set is cheaper. So if you paid more for it when it was more expensive, then that's just, you're an idiot, right? Haha, <laughs> gotcha. 343 gets around this with some more predatory monetizing by claiming that the old armor sets like Zvezda are on sale whenever they appear now. This way they can pretend it's some kind of like bargain even though the prices match the standard prices for their newer armors. Uh, anyway, back to lightning round. Uh, consistently showing advertisements and pictures of armors or coatings that were unavailable to players. Locking certain armor pieces like the Reach Commando or Security Shoulders to armor sets restricting player freedom. Claiming there are free rewards in the Battle Pass, but without the Premium Pass, 80% of what you get is challenge swaps. Tying Ranked Mode to a hidden MMR value so your performance in social playlists affects your ranked position. All in all, the company has had huge leadership issues, where the teams are very compartmentalized and refuse to help each other out, and employees are treated as expendable. I will take one moment here to say that I'm not attacking the individual workers of 343, I'm attacking the management, leadership, and direction of this company. If you're just like a programmer or an artist working at 343, I'm not swinging at you, man. The biggest loss for me is Forge. You could you could have all this other shit, this whole video. If Forge was in the game at launch and it worked properly, 90% of this would be alleviated. As a Forger myself, I could live and forgive everything I just said if this game launched with a powerful Forge. Forge is the true lifeblood of Halo. It's a beautiful tool. 
What other games... What other games let people make racetracks? Their own mini-games, spaces to hang out, their own battlefields to fight on, art pieces, machinima, this is Halo. Forge gave the ability for the community to be creative and share that creativity with each other. That's what keeps people coming back. That's why people are still, to this day, playing Reach and Halo 3 custom games on their browser on MCC when those games are like 25 years old. But I'll be fucked if I hop on Halo Infinite and play one more game of Slayer. With Forge, you can always find something fresh, and those thousands of new players who launched Halo Infinite on opening night, they've already given up on Halo before it really got its chance. 343 made all this noise to get everyone's attention for this game. Well, you got it. But now everyone's seen you with your pants down, and nobody was impressed. So now when you come crawling back in May, saying, Oh, we've got two new maps now, nobody's gonna care. They're gonna be playing other games, they'll have already moved on. As of writing this, the Forge mode is still on track to release for Season 3. But because 343 loves being intentionally vague, we actually don't know when Season 3 is. The seasons are supposed to last 3 months, which would put Season 3 in August. But I've got very little faith in 343, and I expect we won't see Forge until Christmas. I hope I'm wrong though. Do I have hope for the future of Halo? Not unless 343 has its leadership completely gutted and replaced.